Hello. In this video, we're going to review the basics of radiometric age dating and see how it's used to determine the age of rocks and minerals over geologic time. In order to understand this, an important bit of chemistry to learn are the definitions of an atom, an isotope of an atom, and what actually defines radioactivity. Elements refer to the atoms of the periodic table, such as carbon, oxygen, iron, etc. Elements are the basic building blocks of all matter and can't be broken down into simpler chemical substances. Each element on the periodic table has an atomic number. This number is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus and gives each element its unique identity. The atomic mass of an element, how much it weighs, is the sum of the protons and neutrons in the nucleus, given in atomic mass units. So the structure of an atom gives us the definition of an isotope of an element, which is the same element, by def definition, having the same number of protons, but with different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus, and therefore slightly different atomic masses. So for some elements, their nucleus is naturally unstable and spontaneously disintegrates. This is what we call radioactivity or radioactive decay, which changes the number of protons or neutrons in the nucleus and therefore changes the identity of the atom and it releases energy in the process. So let's see how this works for radiometric age dating and determining geologic time. During the 19th century, geologists worked around the globe to deduce the relative ages of rock layers and the fossil changes indicated over time. By 1900, the order of events in geologic history had been fairly well established, but no precise manner of determining the actual span of time had yet been found. In 1905, physicist Ernest Rutherford suggested that radioactive decay, first discovered only nine years prior, could be used to determine the absolute or numerical ages of rocks containing measurable amounts of radioactive isotopes. This is possible because radioactive isotopes, that is, isotopes whose nuclei spontaneously eject particles and convert to those of other elements, break down at constant rates. Using the concept of the half-life, the consistent time it takes for half of the atoms of a radioactive parent isotope to convert to stable atoms of its daughter isotope, absolute ages can be determined. If half of the parent atoms remain, one half-life has passed. If a quarter remain, two half-lives have passed, and so on. So, if the half-life of an isotope were 100 years, and an eighth of the original atoms remained, three half-lives would have passed, and the rock would be 300 years old. Okay, you can't play with the interactive features of this graph, but I can. Notice that this is a plot of the fraction of parent atoms that are remaining in the rock or mineral at any given time in the number of half-lives that have passed. So if we rewind this curve back to the beginning, no time has passed and we have 100% of the atoms that we started with. As each half-life goes by, we lose half of the atoms. So after one half-life, we have 50% of the atoms left. After two half-lives, we only have 25% left, and so on. This curve describes the shape of a curve for exponential decay. Notice that in order to determine the age of the mineral or rock in years, you need to multiply the number of half-lives that have passed by the years per half-life for a given isotope. Examples of isotopes used to date rocks include uranium-238 and 235, potassium-40, rubidium-87, and carbon-14. The specific isotope chosen depends on the minerals present in the rocks to be dated. Once geologists learned to determine rock ages using the isotopic dating techniques, they could apply these to add absolute or numerical dates to the geologic time scale. Over the past century, the time scale has been refined and improved in this manner. Hence, geologists have determined that the Earth was formed about 4.56 billion years ago, the Phanerozoic Eon began about 542 million years ago, 
and the mass extinction of the dinosaurs and numerous other species occurred about 65 million years ago. Here's the chart from the animation that you just saw, and there's a couple of important things to note. Different radioactive elements are found in different types of rocks and minerals, and the radioactive parent atoms have very different half-lives. The length of time of the half-life determines the effective age range for dating, shown here, because you need to have enough of both the parent and the daughter atoms left in the rock to measure. If all of the parent atoms decay away and your radioactive clock is run out, you have no way of knowing the amount of time that has passed. While different minerals can trap different elements, a favorite of geochemists is zircon, a zirconium silicate mineral that's commonly found in a variety of different igneous and metamorphic rocks. Zircon is a very resistant mineral, and it often contains small amounts of uranium, which decay over very long periods of time, and so it's useful for dating very old rocks. Note that carbon-14 is special. It's an isotope that can be used only to date things that were once alive, and it has a very short half-life. So we're limited in the age range over which we can date things with carbon-14. I hope this introduction helps you to understand the basics behind age dating of rocks and minerals. Be sure to review the chemical definitions of atoms, isotopes, and radioactivity. You'll also have an exercise in your lab section that'll give you some practice in working with these concepts.